A question for you fine folks. What was your first experience with Doctor Who? Celebrating the show's 60th anniversary, there are so many happy childhood memories that I have relating to the show, and so I thought on the 60th anniversary it'd be worth sharing them in a video, especially because my relationship with the series has been very on again, off again, right from the start. So, what was my first episode of Doctor Who? Technically, my first ever episode was Army of Ghosts, but I actually caught the very end of that episode, and that was with David Tennant as the Tenth Doctor and Billy Piper as Rose Tyler, and that episode, along with the follow-up episode Doomsday, maybe not the happiest of episodes to begin with on reflection. That ending still haunts me, but experiencing the show for the first time... I must have been maybe about 8 or 9 years old, and that episode would have aired around the holiday season. We're talking mid to late December, where I likely would have finished school for Christmas at that point. And I have extremely vivid memories of channel surfing on the living room TV, just trying to find something to watch. And I skipped through the channels, only to see a man in a brown suit, shouting at a giant egg, and that's exactly how I remember Doctor Who from the get-go, that scene, with no context to anything else going on. And I didn't even know what the show was called at that point, it just seems so random. I then of course saw the second part with the Cybermen and the Daleks, and I was fascinated by just everything going on. I guess mainly because I had no idea what the storyline was, what the Daleks were, what the parallel world was about, and I had no context for any of this, but I loved what I was seeing, and that was the magic of Doctor Who for somebody like myself when I was so young. The visuals alone were enough to captivate me and make me want to see more. But sadly, that was where Series 2 ended, and for a while, I forgot about the show really in its entirety. It wasn't long until the allure of Doctor Who came back, however, where it was a prominent discussion in the school playground. I had friends who were really invested in the series. They collected the Battles in Time trading cards. Does anybody remember those? I recall walking into Woolworths, a chain of UK stores that sadly no longer exists, and I found a magazine with a small TARDIS-shaped tin on the front, which had a booster pack of Doctor Who trading cards for, I believe, 4 99 My dad very kindly bought me that booster pack, and I had a lot of fun learning about the characters, most I'd never even seen on the TV screen before, but it was great to learn about them regardless, and this was over a few months after I watched Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. I would then watch the show over at friends' houses, and this was my gateway into watching Doctor Who, but there was another show that hooked me just as well, and felt more accessible, and that was in the form of the children's television series The Sarah Jane Adventures, which launched around the same time as Doctor Who Series 2 ending. Invasion of the Bane, the first ever episode of the Sarah Jane Adventures, aired around New Year's 2006, but I actually didn't see this until much later in 2007 when the show started airing weekly, and at this point I had no idea Sarah Jane was even connected to Doctor Who. I didn't know about the show's legacy stretching all the way back to the 1960s, or that Liz Sladen, who played the part of Sarah Jane, had anything to do with the Doctor. For me, this was just a science fiction series about a journalist saving the planet from strange alien threats. Regardless, Invasion of the Bane really caught my interest, especially the creature designs, and how one of the main characters, Sarah Jane's adopted son Luke, was created by aliens. And looking back, this show does hold up to an extent. There's some excellent characterization dealing with more mature topics, such as loss and found family, which I applaud. The creature designs and the villains made a lasting impression, particularly the laser tag episode with the alien Uvlavad Kudlak. I was so captivated by this guy that I actually got this action figure of the character. Really unique design with the bug-like head and the really cool sort of red trench coat. I just thought that was a very iconic look for a villain, and I just love this character. And otherwise, the show's writing was very good, but did get a little bit silly on occasion, even for a children's show, and I feel a lot of the CGI, looking back on it, compared to the practical effects, really has aged poorly. But otherwise, Sarah Jane was another playground conversation, which is where I learned about how it connected to Doctor Who, particularly through the Slavine aliens, featured several times throughout this series, which I had no idea they originated in the first run of New Who, which made me want to see those episodes, but sadly, I didn't really get to see any of Series 1 at all when I was younger. 
A friend of mine at the time had all the DVDs, but we just never got round to watching them together, and as time went on, my interest in the series unfortunately did fade. I skipped all of Series 3, I had no idea any of those episodes had even aired at the time. Some friends had stopped talking about Doctor Who altogether and instead switched over to another show called Primeval, and that was a strange sci-fi series that aired for a few years in the UK, and I look at it now as ITV's attempt at making their own science fiction show to rival Doctor Who. Regrettably, it didn't work, but I was really invested in that show more than anything. I should maybe do a video retrospective on that series, which would be fun to revisit, and if you're interested, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that sort of thing, but getting back on topic... It wasn't until 2008 that I got back into Doctor Who where I caught the Series 4 episode, Planet of the Ood, and from then on I was hooked, seeing David Tennant as the Doctor once again, this time with Catherine Tate playing the companion Donna Noble, who is still my favourite companion, and from then onwards, every week, I tuned in for every episode, and I missed a few from the start, like the Adipose one. I did try and watch every single episode with David Tennant starring as the Doctor, right up until the ending at two-parter, the end of time. But when David Tennant regenerated, I was really sad to see him go. I wasn't ready to welcome a new Doctor variant, but of course everything has its time. And I did watch a few episodes with Matt Smith, but I just couldn't get into them in the same way. I didn't get the same feeling from those, and to be honest, still don't. And I used to really hate the Moffat era for that particular reason. In recent years, I have given the Moffat era a second chance and I have warmed to those episodes. But otherwise, the last time I was really excited for anything Doctor Who related was in high school when a friend of mine pre-ordered cinema tickets to go ahead and see the screening for the 50th anniversary special. Here's a look at the DVD set for the 50th anniversary, The Day of the Doctor, and I've still got my original cinema ticket, which is kind of faded, and a note from my friend with a booking reference for when we were going to go and see the 50th anniversary, which is literally 10 years to the day, which is kind of crazy to think about. But knowing David Tennant was coming back as part of this story and the whole war doctor idea with John Hurt playing the sort of unspoken face of this legendary character, I was very excited, and my expectations were definitely met, a very memorable cinema experience, and I just loved seeing the 10th Doctor on the big screen, the reveal of Tom Baker at the end as the 4th Doctor, the curator, I really did enjoy, I've sadly not checked out many of the classic episodes, but from there I went on to watch The Pyramids of Mars, which I really loved, especially seeing a younger incarnation of Sarah Jane, and you can let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations for classic Who, and I may go ahead and check those out at a later time. As for the future of the series, I am honestly very excited at the prospect of what's to come under Russell T Davies. I have every faith in him as a showrunner and as a writer. I may not necessarily agree with him on everything. The recent Davros thing was pretty unexpected, trying to separate villains and disabilities. Davros has now been reinvented and has been removed from the wheelchair, which felt more like a reach, but I understand him trying to promote inclusivity. And he's a good-natured man in what he does and what he represents regardless, and I know he is more than capable of launching Doctor Who to greater heights than ever before. And with Disney contributing to the show's budget for the newest season, already from the teasers we have seen for the upcoming 60th anniversary specials, it shows the cinematography and the CGI effects have never looked better. Plus, I really enjoyed this recent teaser for the upcoming episode, The Star Beast, and seeing Catherine Tate back on form as Donna Noble, how she interacts with her daughter and her reaction to this very cute but creepy alien character, the Meep. <laughs> what the hell? Already, the writing is engaging, and I just cannot wait to see how these next few stories will evolve Doctor Who as a series. Plus, we've also got the next run of episodes to embrace where Shuti Gatwa will be playing the Doctor, and I believe he'll be making his proper debut in an upcoming Christmas special this year with the next run of episodes beginning in, I think, spring 2024, so there's lots of Doctor Who stuff to look forward to. Anyhow, that's going to do it for this video celebrating Doctor Who's 60th anniversary and recalling some childhood memories about the show. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments, what was your first experience with Doctor Who? Are you excited for the upcoming specials? 
And if you want to see more Doctor Who content from me, you can check out my complete retrospective videos detailing my thoughts on the Russell T Davies episodes. I'll put links to those videos in the description. And for more content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel at DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?